Hello fellow coin collectors. Now PVC or polyvinyl chloride is the world's third most widely produced synthetic polymer of plastic and about 40 million tons of PVC are produced each year. PVC comes in two basic forms, rigid and flexible. The rigid form of PVC is used in the construction of various goods such as doors, windows, plumbing and, and that gym membership card that you paid for and that you are no longer using. It can also be made softer and more flexible and it's used in plumbing, electrical cable insulation, imitation leather and of course coin storage. Now of all the substances that you can use to store your coins for long term, PVC is perhaps one of the worst choices. PVC is far from inert. PVC interacts with, with the metal of the coin, creating a slightly acidic reaction. And this causes residual deposits to appear on the coin's surface over time. And this literally eats away at the coin's surface, causing permanent irreparable damage. The deposits appears as a, as a greenish, milky or, or grey streaks or blotches. In severe cases, it looks like a, like a slimy green blob has invaded the surface of the coin. Copper coins are the most vulnerable, followed by silver, then nickel, gold, and platinum. And since most coins are a combination of metals, anything with a bit of copper seems to be vulnerable. Your experts often say that you should never clean your coins. But it's far better giving a PVC infected coin a good wash and go than leaving, it, leaving all that gunk on the coin. At this stage, the damage is already done. Just don't rub it with a, with a harsh cloth or use harsh chemicals. I'll make a video on that in future. Now, since prevention is better than cure, it's always a good idea to use PVC-free containers and to regularly check your coins for any contamination. You know, it's because, you know, other substances and chemical compounds can also have an adverse effect on your coins. Now, one of the easiest tests to conduct is the Beilstein test which identifies all kinds of halogens, which of course includes chloride. The only drawback is that it's a destructive test. But, I mean, a tiny corner from an album is a small price to pay to ensure that your coin is going to last. Now, to conduct the test, you're going to need a Bunsen burner or a simple blowtorch like this one is going to work perfectly well. As well as a piece of copper wire, the kind that you commonly get in electric wiring is more than sufficient. So we're going to start the test by testing these simple bank bags that you use to get at the bank. So what you do is you start off, let's get this thing up and going. So start off by heating the wire itself. This will get rid of all contaminants and uh, make sure that it's clean of any everything else. Then take the plastic element or the plastic bag that you'd like to test and then just dip the, the tip into the plastic so that some of the plastic uh, melts onto the copper wire. Now place the piece of copper wire back into the flame, you'll see initial red flame, or I mean orange flame, and uh, or none at all, as in this case, or well, there's a little bit. And as you can see, nothing much has changed. So this means it's a negative test. So these bank bags that we used to get are of course PVC free. Now the South African Mint released these beautiful uh, mint coins but um, unfortunately the bag that they came in was uh, PVC enriched and of course that's not something we want. So let's have a look how this reacts um, if we repeat the test. I'm going to start by cutting off a small corner. Let's heat up our piece of copper. So let's take a piece of the plastic over here, don't need much. Now have a look what happens if this is placed under the flame. Look at that green. 
Let me repeat the test. You can see see the effect again. So the moment you see green like that, that is an indication of, uh, of chloride, which means that this plastic contains PVC. Of course, many albums these days are released as PVC free. And usually if you find that the plastic is not very pliable and it's, uh, it seems a bit brittle, then usually it's PVC free. Um, so this, this is an album that I used to uh, uh, start off my collection of farlings, South African farlings. So um, let's have a look at one of these um, corners and see if this is PVC free. So we just make sure that everything is uh, burnt off and that the copper is clean. Purified with fire. Okay, so let's have a look at this. So I'm going to take a piece. Let's have a look. Oh! So even albums is not free of PVC. So um, very good idea to even check your albums because even if it was well intended, many of these albums of course also contains PVC. I've been storing this uh, rather rare 1929 half crown in this plastic bag and I know it's PVC free so let's have a look, let's have a look, um, look at that, let me just remove this uh, coin. Now these uh, 29s of course uh, were all 80% um, silver and of course silver is, does react and of course that, that is one of the elements that gets damaged quite quickly. So let's take a, a slither of this. That goes in the flame. As I was saying, I've been storing this 1929 half crown in this uh, two by two sleeve for the last few seconds. So uh, let's quickly make sure that it's also PVC free. So let's heat up our copper wire. Take some of the plastic. And as you can see, um, no green flame. It's a slight uh, red orange, which you could would have expected. So um, no chloride in these in these two by two flips, which is good news. So make a point of it to test your flips and your plastics for PVC. It's a quick and easy test and can save you a lot of heartache later on. Um, I really hope this was as insightful for you as it was for me. I now have an album to clear of coins. Thank you and happy collecting.